Time now to return to the seedy and greedy world of our money-hungry scroungers. Spiritualist leader Yunus Algahar had been unable to work since 1999 due to migraines and living on benefits. Suspected of living in luxurious properties in Surrey and Kent, with you and I the taxpayer picking up half the tab, His Holiness was being investigated by the local council. Here at Rygate and Banster, we do have a zero tolerance approach to, to fraud. So we investigate and pursue each case that comes up and we recover fairly substantial amounts of money. Having spotted a pattern in the fraud, investigators had to get to the bottom of how Eunice Algahar was affording such high rents and deposits. On paper, he was living on benefits, but there seemed to be much more money floating around. So where was it coming from? From looking at the, the claim paperwork, I was able to look into Eunice Algahar's uh, finances. I noticed that he was declared that he held two, two bank accounts, which hadn't been declared for, for benefit purposes. These hidden accounts suggested that Algahar wasn't leading the modest lifestyle of a spiritual leader living on benefits. I noticed there was a lot of payments being made, uh, especially to uh, flight companies uh, and hotels abroad, as well as payments in foreign currency. Uh, and there were also lots of, of debits that were coming in, um, suggesting that there was some form of either um, earned or unearned income going into the account as well. But where was all the money coming from? It was coming in and going out. And he seemed to be a bit of an international traveller with a taste for the high life. The, the overseas payments on the bank statements showed that there were payments being made in foreign currency, including uh, Sri Lankan rupee, American dollars, uh, and in euros over in France as well, um, as well as payments being made as such as on to uh, in flights uh, payments for duty free and, and to airways as well. With undeclared bank accounts and large payments being made and received, the investigator got on the phone to the Department for Work and Pensions, who'd been paying Eunice Algahar income support for over four years to the tune of £54,682, to which he was almost certainly not entitled. The two organisations combined forces. With the help of the investigators digging, Rygate and Bromley Council and the DWP now had some very difficult questions for Algahar to answer. With the help of Surrey police, it was time for them to pay him a visit, to gather some hard evidence on the source of his undisclosed income, and to find out whether he genuinely was living the kind of lifestyle that you'd expect from someone dependent on benefits. At 7am on a morning in November 2011, the team struck. At the time of the, the raid, it was early one morning, um, Yunus Algahar was not actually present at the, um, at the property, however, the, um, the operation continued uh, regardless. A lot of documents that were, that were found in the property and a lot of documents were seized, um, and these are documents relating to his, his current or, or previous tenancies that he held um, in relation to his income and also in relation to, to the claims that he'd made for benefits to put up a picture of his, his finances and, and, and his lifestyle. These documents provided the proof that Algahar had made false claims relating to his rental agreements and earnings. Investigators were also surprised by the huge haul of technical hardware, including mobile phones, laptops, and large screen TVs found at the property. There's no strict rules as to um, what kind of possessions a person can have when they're claiming benefits. Um, there's nothing to stop a benefit claim of having large TVs and lots of computer equipment. However, it depends how those items have been funded, which may set, uh, raise alarm bells. Algahar wasn't at home for the raid, but later on handed himself in to 